Hello, welcome to Saintly Minute. Um, today's saint is Saint Martin de Porres. So Saint Martin was um, mixed race, okay, which at the time was looked down upon. So he um, he had a Spanish dad, Spanish gentleman, it said, and then his mom was a freed slave, so either a Native American or um, African descent. And um, during this time. Well, when he's young, let's start there. When he's young, his dad leaves, okay? So his mom and him and his younger sister, they grow up in, like, extreme poverty, okay? So he does two years of school, of primary school, and he follows a trade, basically. And so he follows a surgeon slash barber who teaches him um, how to cut hair, but also the medical arts. So as he grows um, older, Martin experiences, like, a ridiculous amount of, of bullying, basically, and ridicule for being a mixed race. Um, so in Peru at this time, descendants of Africans or um, Native Americans were not allowed to become full members of religious orders. So Martin, um, who spent so many hours in prayer, realizes that his only way in the community that he longed to be part of was to ask the Dominicans of Holy Rosary Priory in Lima to accept him as a servant um, who performed like the most menial tasks in the monastery. And then in return, he'd be allowed to wear the habit and live within the community. So when he's 15, he asks for permission um, and he's received as a servant boy and eventually moves up to the church officer that's in charge of distributing money to the deserving poor. Um, Martin, during his time in the convent, he takes on his old trades of barbering and healing. And he also worked in the kitchen, he did laundry, he cleaned. Um, okay, and then after eight years, okay, eight more years, oops, I dropped one, with the Holy Monastery, the Holy Rosary Monastery, he is granted the privilege to um, take vows as a member. The leader at the time, um, or the the head at the time, um, decided to disregard the law that about um, that restricted Martin just based on his race. So although he um, did not agree with that law, a lot of the other Dominican brothers did. And so St. Martin actually, even in the walls of the monastery, um received even more like horrible names and he was mocked for being an Ill being an illegitimate child and also descending from slaves. Um, so at the age of 24, he became a Dominican lay brother. Um, 10 years later um, of being the, the lay brother, he is assigned the infirmary, which is where he would remain um, in charge until his death. And <clears throat> he became known for um, for having the virtues needed to carefully and patiently care for the sick, even in the most difficult situations. Um, he was amazing at taking care of people, no matter where they came from, no matter their wealth, no matter their race. Um, and he didn't care if the person was dece diseased or dirty he would welcome them into his own home. Um, so St. Martin is a really great reflection of God's great love for us and all of God's gifts. Um, it's also said that he had many extraordinary abilities, including um, like aerial flights, by location, instant cures, miraculous knowledge, spiritual knowledge, um, and also an excellent relationship with animals. He founded an orphanage for abandoned children, um, and slaves, and he's also um, known for helping young girls in short amount of time. So, like, if they needed, like, a, anything, like money, he would, like, raise it like this and help them out. Um, so, during an epidemic in Lima, um, some of the friars had become very, very ill, and they were locked away in a distant section of the convent um, to keep everyone else safe. So Martin actually would go through those doors and care for the sick. Um, and when he became disciplined for this, um, 
he he replied, forgive my error and please instruct me, for I did not know that obedience took precedence over that of charity. And after that comment, he was fully allowed to do whatever he needed to do in his heart, um, to follow his heart into mercy and to care for those that were sick. Um, he ends up spending a year very ill before he passes. So I think St. Martin is a really good example. And I mean, we still see racism today, right? We still, we still see it. We still hear about it. Um, I think St. Martin is just a really good example of what Christ calls us to do. And that is to love, right? Um, and it doesn't matter who you are, where you come from, we are called to love. And I think St. Martin did that. Um, he did that really, really well. And on top of that, he didn't let his past cloud his judgment on other people, right? He could have. He could have said, like, you used to be mean to me. You're sick, so go suffer. But instead, he'd be like, it's fine. Come on in. I'll take care of you. Um, so I think that's just a good reminder to us that it doesn't matter if we don't, we um, had a bad experience with someone. We are still called to love them unconditionally. It's hard. Sometimes it stinks. We don't like that answer. That's what we're called to do. So let's pray that St. Martin de Pours can lead us into love, into Christ's love. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. St. Martin de Pours, pray for us. St. Martin, you are an extraordinary example of Christ's love. Your life was not easy, and yet you didn't let it cloud your judgment of others that walked through your door. You helped the needy, you clothed the naked, you gave drink to the thirsty. Christ calls us all to do this. And St. Martin, we just ask that you walk with us and gently remind us and, and you know, slowly change our hearts. Take away um, any harden in our hearts so that we may see others as you did and um, in the way or in the eyes of Christ. Amen. And Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. All right, guys, we'll see you tomorrow for another saintly moment.